Hello and welcome to another laser engraver review video and this time it is two trees uh, TTS 55 laser engraver and uh, this is their improved version because I was curious what are the improvements uh, approximately a year ago I did a review of their previous generation and uh, that was my first uh, full frame laser engraver and uh, I wasn't enough experienced and I skip uh, a really important part uh, to mention why is that design so good and able to print on those uh, higher engraving speeds and uh, I will mention it in this video and in the conclusions I will get, give some tips how can it be even improved a few more specifications uh, the engraving area is 300 by 300 millimeters and it is able to engrave uh, up to 8000 mm per minute engraving speeds a few more improvements to mention it has the emergency stop button uh, it is easier for installation and it has improved the laser lifters to set the focus of the module well i didn't have any problems with the previous one so i'm curious what is improved here it has a reserve space for the air assist kit because uh, I already have now experience that for the cutting the air assist improves uh, significantly those edges for engraving it doesn't help but for cutting it's, it helps a lot the power of the laser module which arrives in this kit is uh, 5.5 watts and uh, the laser engraver can operate on USB ok before the unboxing uh, only a few words about the safety so don't forget the laser engravers are tools which require some safety equipment most important are safety glasses uh, but also if you are expecting that somebody enters suddenly in that uh, room then uh, maybe uh, an enclosure is recommended too which has to be of course uh, DIY created by yourself okay now let's see what's in the box packaging of the laser module and the power adapter Output of the power adapter is 12 volts, 3 amperes, or it can, can have a peak of 4 amperes. Box in a box. Product manual with some sample materials. USB cable for connecting with the laptop. Safety glasses. They included this in the preview spec too, so this is some kind of uh, phone holder and you can engrave your logo or something like that. I believe these are legs of the engraver and this is I think some kind of tensioner for the timing belt. Laser module holder and it has nice uh, lid screw to adjust the height, the focus of the laser. These are some screws and bolts for the assembling. And this is the main unit with the cables. And this would be the emergency stop button. I thought it's, you know, when you hit, press it. But at least it's red and, ah, there is a slot for the memory card. So you can engrave offline. The power plug and the USB plug. Tools, zip ties, um, TF card with the card reader, open end wrench to adjusting the V slot wheels, and this is alloy extrusion with one stepper motor on the side with a nice visible ruler. R, the right side. Uh, Bellow is uh, the, another alloy extrusion. And this is another L extrusion and it has L, like a left side. And this one has two stepper motors. One is for the Y axis and the other is probably for the X. And look how much smaller is the X stepper motor. And two more L extrusions. And the box is empty. First step installing the frames and we have the L and R left and right side. Uh, this is the back side and on the front side we have some uh, holes and the countersunk holes goes to from the inside and actually we have two zero zero positions in two corners so here and here and i have to connect these uh, extrusions with the uh, m5 by 20 volts The frame is pre-assembled, but I didn't tie those bolts yet. 
because now I have to install these legs and uh, tie these um, M5 by 10 uh, bolts and only then I have to tie these uh, longer bolts in this other extrusion. Pay attention to the order of the tightening. So first this 10 mm bolt, then 20 mm and then again the 20 mm which we pre-installed in the previous step. Repeat the same in all four corners and the legs are installed. And definitely I can confirm that this step is much simpler compared to the previous version. In the next step we have to adjust the V-slot wheels because I noticed these on the right side are uh, not tight enough, which is not a problem because uh, if they are tight in factory, uh, they may deform uh, staying in safe position for a longer period of time. Adjusting is very easy, just use the provided open end wrench and rotate the eccentric nuts until you cannot uh, rotate or very hardly the wheel with your hand. They are tight now, maybe too tight. Okay. Next is installing the x-axis and first I have to place the laser module holder on this uh, aluminum profile. Don't forget the wires goes down, it will be in this position. So this side where we have several holes goes to here on the left side. And the timing belt is around this solar extrusion. Next is installing the tensioner, and this may be a little bit tricky, so I will show the full process. So I pull out this uh, knob, and then I can take out uh, the tensioner part and the idler. And now I can take out the idler and place the belt around it. Place it back and tie it with this bolt. Now to be honest I am doing this uh, instantly so the, this part of the user manual is not completely clear. So the tension is installed now, now I have to place the timing belt around the pulley on this side. This was a hard one, uh, this should be somehow simplified. Now this is also a little bit confusing but they fix it with this sticker here. So before we tight the timing belt with tensioner, first we have to fix the position of the alloy extrusion with these long bolts. And one from this side. I think it is more comfortable in this position. Before tightening these long bolts, uh, make sure that uh, this X axis is parallel with these extrusions. And for this, uh, we have uh, this uh, helpline here and here. And if we place it next to it, we know it's parallel with this extrusion. And now I can set the tension on this timing belt on x-axis. Just be careful, don't over tight it because it's very easy with this mechanism. Now I can feel some resistance before I press it down, so I think it's tight now. Now I notice an interesting thing, well interesting only for me, for a uh, regular user, it's not important. They don't use the GT2 uh, timing belt, which uh, usually do uh, see the printer manufacturers, but this is 2M just in case if you want to buy a spare part or something like that. Next up is installing this laser module. A uh, few words about it. So here we have a fan. I hope it's not too loud. And I really like that uh, this protection is removable. So I can easily remove it and see the position of the laser before I start with the engraving. Now a few words about this laser module holder. They said this is improved version, but the previous version was on linear rails and this is on linear rods. 
so I'm not sure why is it improved. Uh, maybe uh, because of this locking mechanism, with this we can lock the position after we set the focus of the laser module. Uh, I'm sure this will work fine too, but uh, I'm not sure is it improvement or not. Installing of the module will be with M3 by 8 bolts, two from this side and two from the other side. And before I tighten the bolts, as you can see, the laser module can move a little bit freely around this axis. So I want to be sure that this is under 90 degree angle as much as possible. And only now I will tie these bolts. And quick check uh, of the eccentric nut on this V-slot wheel because it's a little bit loose, so I want to tighten it. Okay. Next is installing the holders. So this is for the cable management, it's metallic. And this is 3D printed part and I believe this is the holder for this distancer for setting the focus. And we have uh, pre-installed the holes here so we don't have to use those T-nuts like with the previous version. And here is another a little bit bigger cable holder and it will be installed on the left side of the engraver. Next is installing the mainboard box and we have uh, holes again so we don't have to use t nuts Only the screws are going to our extrusion from the back side. It's time for the wiring and the cable management and I'm starting on this front side. This is the left side of the engraver and first I will install this uh, bigger cable holders which goes from the main board. And next to it is the smaller one which goes to the module. And this wire will go to the module but first let's install this cable holder. This wire I will plug into this laser module. Don't forget to check that uh, these cables are long enough to reach any point inside this square. Okay. And don't forget, don't move too quickly because uh, the stepper motors may create a current which may damage the mainboard. Let's finish the wiring. It's simple because the cables are wired. So this is the Y1 stepper motor, which is this one here. X, which is this one here. And this is Y2, which goes into this cable, which will transmit the current on the other side. And the last one. And our last check on the Y axis belts. And it looks like this is a little bit loose and the method how can I tighten it is uh, with this uh, bolt and the T-nut. Yes, much better and same on the other side. Now it is assembled and the wires are connected so let's talk about the design. What I really like is the, that this laser module is uh, on these linear rails and we can adjust the position with this uh, knob here. So we have to lose it here. Uh, adjust the position with this distancer and fix the position with this knob here. I also really like that they care about the cable management so we have these uh, cables and they're not just hanging around. Uh, only one thing would be nicer from this and that's the drag chain but I think this is very nice solution too because in this case the cables are not broken so this radius is uh, bigger compared to the drag chains. I really like that uh, this protection glass is removable uh, with this I can easier see the position of the laser before I start with the engraving because don't forget here we don't have uh, the limit switches so the uh, engraving zero, 0 position is always relative to the start position of the module. Very smart is that they moved the stepper motor from here to the side 
With this we need a longer timing belt, but even the tension, setting the tension is easier with this tensioner here. And this means this separate motor is not a moving part. Less mass is moved. That's very smart and uh, also I really like that the uh, center of the mass of this laser engraver is very near the in the middle of the solar extrusion. So probably we will not have those uh, vibrations like we can see with those um, engravers where the center of the mass is much lower. Now there is a suggestion for the two trees. The similar thing they could do with the y-axis stepper motors. Now the, this timing belt goes only from here around the pulley and to here. So this is the length of the timing belt. But if they do similar like they do, do with x-axis, the stepper motors of the y-axis can be moved here and here. So they can be fixed. They will not be on this moving part. Of course, in this case, we need a double length of the timing belts, but they can install very nice uh, tensioner here. So it's even better than these uh, T-nuts and the bolts to set the tension of the timing belt. But if we remove the y-axis stepper motors from here, so here we have a significantly less mass, maybe one stepper motor is enough placed here with double shaft, or actually that's one shaft which sticks out on the both sides, similar like on NDF5 Pro. And uh, with the longer, with coupling and the longer shafts, uh, we can have here and here the, the pulley and they will move the y-axis. So in this case, maybe they can save some money with one separate motor, but uh, the quality will be similar probably because uh, here we will remove this huge mass of these bigger uh, y-axis separate motors. First I will do some engravings and cuttings uh, using the USB connection connected with my laptop and using the laser GRBL software. And later I will test different engraving methods, maybe using the Wi-Fi or something like that. So I test this engraver mostly uh, connected over the USB uh, with my laptop and I'm using the laser GBL software because it's free but it is available only for Windows. For those who have uh, the Macintosh or Linux users, uh, they can use the Lightburn which is uh, not completely free software but it is more advanced. Now first of all I have to uh, install the CH340 driver but it's already installed here. It's connected with USB and I can turn it on. Set the COM port and the baud rate and I, then I can connect the, with the engraver. And just quick check is it moving. So it's connected and it's working fine. And I can prepare my first uh, engraving. First I'm opening a file which will be this logo and uh, it will be a vectorize uh, tool. And here you can see my parameters but I will always show you my settings on the screen during the engraving or cutting. And I will start with the engraving on the pie wood and first I have to set the focus. I have to lose this knob here. And then by rotating this knob I can lower the laser module. And now the focus is set to this surface on this plywood. The second method to set the focus of the laser is uh, to use this protection glass. And in this case I need something which is approximately 3 mm thickness as a distancer. Fix the position. And now the uh, laser is focused to this surface. And there is another suggestion for the two trees. They could use a bigger pitch on this lead screw because I need a really lot of rotation until I, if I want to move it, I don't know, maybe several centimeters. Uh, because it's not important, we have less friction, but anyway, we will lock the position with this uh, screw here. Safety glass is on and let's check the boundaries. It's okay and I can start with engraving. Looks like that this laser is a little bit stronger than the previous generation because uh, these are the settings for the older version. Let's try to double the speed. Uh, 
200 millimeters per minute it looks much better and there are absolutely no waves so that's what I predicted so that's why I like this kind of uh, mechanism and structure and now let's try to engrave some uh, grayscale image I already did some experimenting so the best results I got between 10,000 and 8,000 millimeters per minute I'm loading this uh, grayscale image and I'm setting the 12 lines per millimeter. Here you can see again my settings. And uh, I'm starting with the graving and this is the time lapse of approximately 9 minutes. And after 9 minutes it's finished. And now let's try some cutting for warming up. This is approximately 2 mm plywood. And I always like to lift it so I can see the beam on the other side. But properly with this it doesn't have a problem. The object even fell out but I could see constantly the beam from the other side. Nice cutting, I can see some burned edges a little bit, but definitely an air assist in this case would help. And now let's see what is its maximum on the plywood. I glued together three pieces of 2mm plywood and let's see how much it will be cut in one pass. I slow it down, 100mm per minute and constant full power. Interesting, I noticed that uh, the laser goes through in X direction, so it is not completely squared. So this was the cutting, let's see how many layers we have. Okay, one. And the second didn't completely cut. And something I mentioned, so in X direction, it's stronger than in the y direction. Another wood cutting attempt, so this is 3mm MDF. It's very hard for cutting and I'm curious how many passes I need until I cut through. First pass. So this is what I got. Uh, I could see on the other side a little bit uh, the laser beam now, but uh, very burnt edges so I had to quit because I noticed some flame. Now let's try to break it out. Okay, so after 7 passes, but uh, this laser is not really for the MDF cutting plywood, okay, but uh, this is too strong wood. And now let's try to cut uh, black acrylic. Um, this is in my previous review video after one pass. So properly with this strength I will need two passes until it's completely cut and this is 3mm acrylic glass. Second pass. And it fall out. So as I predicted, a very nice sharp cutting, but I needed two passes to cut this 3mm black acrylic, and that's what usually I need for the 5mm laser engraver. And usually you can see here what I like get with one pass. So in one direction it is almost cut, but uh, in this direction it needs two passes. 5 watt power is not too strong, but uh, I want to try to engrave a stainless steel, but I will use this marker as an additional surface. Now let's clean this with some isopropyl alcohol. So it is there, visible, and for the feeling uh, I can a little bit feel that it is edged. 
Well, of course, these, these are 10 watt uh, lasers, uh, but uh, it is possible, it's a little bit light, but uh, yes, it can engrave stainless steel with some help of the marker. Now for the end I wanted to try to engrave something over the Wi-Fi. So I started the MKS laser tool which was on the SD card and then I will plug over the USB the engraver. I'm going to the Wi-Fi configuration tool. I uh, choose here the COM3 connect and here I will enter the Wi-Fi of my home network and then I go connect to the Wi-Fi After I get here the OK sign, uh, I can get my IP address. I can disconnect and unplug the engraver. And after the restart, this will be the IP address uh, for the application. After the restart of the engraver, uh, this IP address should be live. Let's try it. I started the MKS laser application and now I will go to the connecting and here I have to add, enter that IP address which I got on my uh, program connect and it's connected now a quick check of the control so it's working and uh, I prepared an, uh, one NC code on the SD card let's try to find it and to engrave that I'm going here now to, to graving and there is that's the file which I saved previously on the SD card. Confirm. Uh -huh, and it immediately starts with the engraving. So I really don't like that uh, it doesn't ask for the boundary check or something like that. So this really needs some improvements. Graving finish or stop confirm okay basically it was finished but I really don't like that I don't have the possibility to set the center or check the boundaries so uh, it works but it really needs some uh, improvements and now the conclusions let's start with this fan it is good that it is quieter than we usually see on the laser engravers but it would be good if it would turn off when the laser module is not in use uh, I really like this uh, protection glass that it is a removable. Easier we can see the position of the laser before we start with the engraving. About this uh, adjusting the focus, about the lead screw. Uh, it would be better if it, this uh, would have a little bit bigger pitch. In that case, uh, less rotation we need to move, I don't know, set a few millimeters. Because if I have to adjust uh, two or six centimeters, it really takes time until I rotate it a lot. And uh, it doesn't matter that it will have less friction because the screw from the side which locks the position of the module. Okay, I really appreciate that the two trees take care about the cable so they are not just hanging around but uh, they try to do some nice cable management and this, this solution is okay, I really like it. And I appreciate that they move the X stepper motor to the side, it's not on the moving part of, on the laser module. Uh, with this uh, less weight if moved in X direction, but they could do this with the Y stepper motors too I mean they could be moved. I don't know maybe to the back side so they can be fixed Of course in that case we need two times longer timing belts, but uh, definitely I think it's worth it because uh, Without those two steppers on this moving part uh, The weight is reduced and we can get even higher speeds and uh, with that solution we can have a nice tensioner, so we can adjust the tension on uh, Y uh, timing belts too. Now about that Wi-Fi, uh, I'm not too happy how it works, uh, because I still have to be in home uh, Wi-Fi environment uh, for it to work. Uh, and I have a problem, because usually my engraver is down in a basement, and uh, I don't want to bring uh, my laptop down every time I want to engrave something small or something like that. I would be happier if I would have some kind of screen, even the cheapest one doesn't matter, and then I can choose to select some NC file which I saved earlier on the SD card and I can engrave that. 
uh, even with this app I definitely need some improvement because if I start uh, choose the NC file which I want to engrave it immediately starts with engraving I didn't even have time to put my safety glasses on uh, it would be good to have some kind of button to I know boundary check or center position or something like that before I start engraving so I'm uh, sure that it is in correct position Okay, so those are my experiences with uh, this laser engraver. Definitely I can notice the improvements from the previous version. Definitely it's much easier to assemble it, so uh, I think we don't even have, not even one tin nut. So those holes uh, are uh, pre-assembled in the Alex version, so it's much easier to assemble the legs or, or the holders or similar. Of course, this 5.5 laser power is uh, quite limited, depending on your needs. You saw in this video what can it uh, do, what can it cut or engrave. Uh, it will be good if you, in future if the two trees would offer an option to buy this with maybe 10 watt laser engraver, which I experienced now in several uh, reviews earlier. And we, those are really powered, and uh, we can really cut uh, some deeper, thicker uh, plywoods or, or engrave directly on stainless steel. I hope I covered most important things. If I skip something, you know, write me a line down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy engraving!